Welcome back to this edition of World Insight. As we leave one part of the program and move into the next, our second story takes us to India. The country launched its first nuclear-powered submarine. In doing that, India became the sixth country after the US, Britain, France, Russia and China to possess that technology. For years now, the world has been talking about India's potential to become a global power. A submarine launch is a step forward. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment of pride and celebration for Indians. The launch of the nuclear-powered submarine is a milestone in the country's quest for nuclear deterrence. The sea is increasingly becoming relevant in the context of India's security needs and interests, and we must therefore readjust our military preparedness to this fast-changing environment. It took India 11 years to develop the submarine with the help of Russia. Even so, Indians have every reason to be proud as India has joined a very exclusive club of five nations. The timing of the launch is also symbolic. It came as India celebrated its 10th victory day marking its defeat of Pakistan in the Kargil sector of Kashmir. It also came one week after the U.S. Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, linked big arms sales during her visit. Through the launch, India has completed a nuclear triad, encompassing land, air and sea. It's modernizing its armed forces. Its development of nuclear submarines highlights its ambition to become a more visible presence in the Indian Ocean. One week after its arms deal with the U.S., it showed to the world that it has its own capability of arms development, regardless of the U.S. supplement. When Hillary Clinton left India, holding contracts for defense and nuclear energy worth up to 40 billion U.S. dollars, she was grateful to her hosts. She said, I consider India not just a regional power, but a global power. Clinton's words were surely music to Indian ears. The nation of 1.2 billion people and one of the four ancient civilizations has a claim to this title. It dates back to its first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, who was in power from 1947 to 1964. In his book, The Discovery of India, he first proposed the vision of a superpower. The dream has passed on for generations, and now the reality is coming ever closer. Forecasts from major banks and financial institutions say India will be a superpower in about 40 years' time. These estimates put India's economy ahead of Japan by 2025 and the United States in 2050. India has become an important player on the stage of Asia and the world. Since its independence from British rule in 1947, its political leaders and social elites believe that India should be a global power. India is a country with an ambition of global vision. So where is India's great power? Some critics say it's in its growing economy, the stability of its democracy, and its reserves of goodwill from the West. The economy has seen a decade of more than 7% growth rate and is forecast to keep the pace despite the global economic downturn. The extraordinary appeal of Bollywood carries the country's soft power to the world. India has developed the world's largest democracy. Countries like the U.S. have good reason to want India to think and act like a global power. The U.S. regards India as an important player in its Asian and global strategy. When U.S. President Barack Obama first came to power, he focused on dealing with the financial crisis and anti-terrorism war in Afghanistan. Some Indians feared that they might be neglected. But the fact is, India continues to play a key role in the U.S. geopolitical strategy. India's connection with the West goes far beyond the political. Its entrepreneurs are busy taking over iconic brands and businesses throughout the world. Tata Motors is just one example. 
last year, Tata surprised the world by taking over the luxury brands Jaguar and Land Rover from Ford. In June this year, Tata launched its new acquisitions for the domestic market. Also impressive is its development of the world's cheapest car, the Nano. Analysts say India's entrepreneurial instincts and technological talent are partly the legacy of its colonial history. India's independence in 1947 was preceded by centuries of British rule, during which ideas of modernity were transplanted onto a traditional civilization. It seems that now some Indians have entrepreneurship in their DNA. It's all part of the result of its similarities with the West in language, education, lawism, etc. First, we should see that India's economy has been developing rapidly in the past two decades. It has achieved a lot. Second, it's a big developing country. It faces many challenges, especially in the rural areas. So we should recognize its imbalances as well as its great potential. The 21st century is said to be the century of Asia. The rise of India represents a part of the dynamic side of the region. It might be difficult to tell how close India is to becoming a superpower. Its development is surely in the interest of the region and the world. Well, India's drive to becoming a global superpower reflects its growing economic and political clouts over many decades. No matter how far that goal still is, it's already a resurgent nation, embracing its role as an emerging Asian superpower. The complexity of its development is characteristic of its diversity and will, of course, be keeping a close eye on how it all plays out.